If you were ever robbed, would you be able to identify the perpetrator and give an accurate description to the police? So let's put you to the test. I'm going to show you this picture and I'm going to ask you to identify a lined up just after the timer ends. Saving a life, returning knowing that someone is waiting for you, making someone's dream come true. So what I'm actually doing, I'm trying to scramble your brains a little bit so you forget what he looks like. So here are the pictures. Is it this guy, this guy, or this guy? If your instinct tells you that it's this guy, you're absolutely right. Some of you might even notice that I've Adobe Photoshop off the scar. Why? Because sometimes thieves can use makeup to cover up their markings so that they might not be identified. So if your guess was this person, you're absolutely 100% correct. Next one will not be so easy. Have a look at this face and I'm going to put a composite of certain part of his facial features and see if you can identify if this is his eyes or is it this one or is it this one. It's usually identifiable if the whole composite is set up together but to describe individually to the policeman and the sketch artist, it is not as easy as you think. If you guess that it was this set of eyes, you are absolutely correct, okay? And later on, I'm going to show you how to identify. But right now, can you identify which nose belongs to the perpetrator? Noses are not that important, but anyway, I, if you're able to identify, I think you're pretty good. Is it the first one, second one, or third one? If you guess that it was this one, mm, you're right again. Okay, well done. Next, we're going to talk about the lips. So, are you able to remember which lips belong to the person that we're trying to identify? If you think it's the one the, on the extreme left, uh, no, that belongs to Brad Pitt. So, the right answer is the one on the extreme right. Did you get that correct? If you did, good. Now, we're going to move on to the years. The first year, second year, third year, uh, they kind of look similar because most of the time people don't pay attention to what the years look like. But if you guess this one, then you are spot on again. Next, we're going to move on to the jawline and the jawline is pretty important. Okay, is it a narrow jawline, medium size or large jawline? Are you able to identify without the rest of the features of the face? If you think it's the one on the extreme right, you are wrong. It's the one on extreme left. So here's his face again and take a look at it. A good hard look. And I'm going to share with you how to identify each point. So I'm going to take out my sketch pad right now. I'm going to show you how to identify and to describe a face to the police. Okay, so on the right we have the guy that we want to describe to the police. And on my left is the portrait pad. So what we're going to do is we are going to start off by identifying the main features on this guy's face. So in this case, you see the lines on the face that's very distinct, the hairstyle and the droopy eyes. These are the features that stands out immediately. Then next, you take a look at the jawline, it's a bit squarish. Okay, so let's go to our sketchpad right now and we're going to choose the hair. There are lots of female hair, there are a few guy hairs for us to choose and uh, that this one okay best represents the face that we see on the right of course we don't have every hairstyle but this one kind of uh, represents and you know the thief can always change his hairstyle or even cut his hair shorter next we will choose the face shape most importantly you see the jawline whether it's curved or is rectangular so in this case we have a hexagonal chin uh, jawline. So we're going to pick one and we can amend it later. Uh, this guy does it, did not uh, wear any hat or cap so we can move on to the eyes. So for the eyes we try to identify whether this person has a uh, double eyelids or single eyelid. In this case he has massive double eyelid. Okay so we're going to pick one with a massive eyelid and so we're going to find one that is droopy eyes. This one that we selected uh, it looks a bit Alright, but I kind of have a, a squint 
So that would not be it. We want to look a bit uh, in the moment, dreamy eyes. Okay. So we just pick one first and later on we can still amend if we are unhappy. I would like to pick this one but um, it doesn't have double eyelid. So we just keep to this one for a while. Now we move to the eyebrow. Eyebrow, you'll see whether it's straight wing or is it drooping down. So in this case, it's slightly drooping down at the edge as you can see. Okay, whether it's straight or whether it's wing upwards, this one is drooping down. So we pick this one and the face will start taking shape. Next, next we move to the nose and as I said, the nose is not as important. We just see whether it's a flashy nose or a long straight nose. So in his case, uh, his is strong, thin, long nose. So we just pick one and this program actually allows me to lengthen the nose later if I find it's too short. Okay, so we just plunk that and we move on to the lips. For the lips, we'll see whether it's thin, um, um, disappearing lips, or in this case, it's full. And you can see a cupid shape. That means the top lip looks like a McDonald's M, okay? So that's a cupid lip. So we'll pick one that will be able to best represent this person. It looks very small on this uh, composite at the moment, but as I said, we can uh, amend it later. This is a bit downturn. We might go back to the other lip. Or we could just put the facial lines first. So in this case, we put the furrows. We put the furrows in. And there are also compassion lines on the cheeks. So we will pick the compassion lines. Okay, it's not so much at the position at the moment, but more like uh, the shape. So it curves inwards like an inverted N. And yeah, I'm happy with that one. No moustache, no beard. So we move on to perhaps uh, that little mole on his right side of his face. No other visible scars. That mole looks kind of big, but let's get it into position first. And then later on, we will reduce in size. Now we are going to shift the compassion lines down because as you can see, it's very far away from the lips. So we're going to move it down. The compassion lines actually cuts below the lips. Yeah, that's more like it. Uh, the pharaohs, no, we're going to change much. So the lips look kind of small. Now we're going to expand the lips so it looks a bit more uh, closer representation of the person on the right. Oh, the ears, we're missing the ears. So yeah, let's put some ears that we only need two choices. It comes to ears, it doesn't matter. One is closer to the face and the other one is sticking out. So we'll take the one that's closer to the face. Okay, that's probably as close as we can get. I'll probably want to change the eyes a little if I had the opportunity to. So let's take a look at a few more eyes. This one, this one will be good, but it just doesn't have the double eyelid. Okay. So it's more or less have a good representation of the person on your right. Are you able to describe the person that assaulted uh, you? African American, tall, haircut like that, facial hair, goatee, small ears, diamond shape, and broad nose, good set of teeth. Did I say tall? Do you have um, anyone that fits that description? Is this the guy? That's him! 